Hi, and welcome to this section of the Physics Tutor. And in this section, as promised, we will continue talking about Gauss's Law in the final uh, section of the types of problems that we're going to study with Gauss's Law. In this case, it's going to be spherical symmetry. So you might guess that in this section, you know, since the last couple of sections we've done cylindrical symmetry, planar symmetry, well, here is spherical symmetry. So every problem here is going to involve a ball or a shell or something like that. So let's just kind of uh, get right into it. What I want you to consider is a shell of charge. So not a piece of metal or anything like that, but just imagine floating in space if somehow electrons or protons gathered together and formed a nice three-dimensional beach ball with a thin, you know, thin uh, th uh, uh, thickness to it, but it's a, so it's hollow on the inside, but it's a shell. That's what I want you to think about. And so if you had an arrangement like that, it might look something like this. You might have, you know, all these charged particles or something like that here, and there's, you know, there's some thickness to it, so I'm kind of draw, trying to do some randomness to it here just to kind of show you. Right, so it's a thin, uh, a, th a thin diameter. I mean, a thin uh, walled shell of charge. And if we were going to label something, we would label this the capital R. Okay, and let's say it had some total charge associated with it. So we know how big it is, and it had a total charge uh, Q. Total charge Q, which is what you might expect. So Q is on the on the surface here. Uh, the first thing we want to calculate, we'll just kind of go and learn by doing a problem here. What is the electric field inside of this shell of charge? Inside the shell of charge. Uh, so we're going to use Gauss's law, and because it's a ball, we're going to use a sphere for uh, our Gauss's law. So, you know, we drew a general form of the picture here, but let's go ahead and, you know, draw it again down here just so we kind of have our Gaussian surface lined up with what we're doing. So if we were going to do that, the Gaussian surface to pick would obviously be one that went and filled inside. Now you got to also think these are these are shells. So this is a beach ball and then the Gaussian surface is also a beach ball hovering right inside here. And the, you know we're going to call this little r, that's our observation point right on the edge of the Gaussian surface uh, there. So Gauss's law, you apply just like you would think. It's the permittivity times the surface integral of the electric field dotted with dA, and that's equal to the included charge of the charge included inside of this little spherical shell. Okay, now it's the same sort of thing as before. I mean, you're going to make some assumptions. You're going to pretend there's an electric field uh, on on this uh, surface, and if it is, you're going to pretend it's going to be radially in or out because of the sphere, the symmetry of the thing. And uh, you're going to assume it's constant, and that kind of makes sense because of the nice spherical distribution of everything. So if you make those assumptions, then you can basically write this as a multiplication like we've, we've been doing, which is effectively pulling the electric field out of the integral and then integrating the surface area of a sphere. So what you're going to have is E times 4 pi r squared, because that's the surface area of a sphere. And that's going to equal to the charge included inside of the sphere, which is zero because there's no charge in here, because we're looking inside the shell of charge. So you can see by doing this, if you take and solve for E, that the electric field is zero inside the shell, which also is when R is less than capital R, because remember, capital R was the um, diameter of the shell, and little r is the diameter of my little Gaussian surface that's kind of inside there. So the electric field is zero inside there, 